afternoon or, or good evening, I guess it is. Uh, I want to share with you a little bit of what I've been uh, hearing and seeing in the past few weeks. And, and so I want to start with actually a Christmas text from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, at the very beginning of Luke, Mary finds out that she's going to have a child and she sings a song in this gospel that uh, tells of her hopes for what her child will be and do for the world. And so she says, um, and I'm, I'm starting at Luke 1, and I'm going to start with verse 51. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary's song is a song of reversals. In, in Jesus' ministry, he also talked a lot about reversals, reversing the way things are. Uh, probably his most famous sermon is the Sermon on the Mount. And in that, Jesus again reverses what the world has become. Uh, Jesus wasn't the first one to talk about this. The prophets were really focused on reversing uh, what the world had become. And so in in Micah 1, the prophet says, All of this is for the transgression of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. And then uh, in the same vein, the prophet Amos speaks these words in verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 1. And it's, uh, not only is it a word of admonishment, but it's also kind of snarky. He says, Hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on Mount Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to their husbands, bring something to drink. So God is talking about reversals in all of these. You know, whether it's uh, the uh, world that Jesus was born into or the world of the prophets. And so Lately, I've been uh, hearing and reading about sin. And it's very interesting because there's two very different strands of thought about sin in contemporary uh, Christian thinking. The first thinking about sin is that it's all individual. That sin is about the individual, about who is doing what. Are you disrespecting your parents? Are you lying? 
are you coveting? Those kinds of indivis individual sins are one way of thinking about sin. Another way of thinking about sin is a uh, social sin where what we have done as a community causes harm to some. And that's what Mary's talking about. That's what the prophets are talking about. That it isn't only the sins of an individual, but it's the sins of a community. And usually that sin is hurting other people. We today call it social sin. So uh, there's a battle now going on within the Christian church about this. You know, we in, in the United Church of Christ don't really uh, talk about sin that much, but we do need to understand that there's a there's a nuance there that uh, will help us to uh, focus our attention on what sin can be. And when we forget then that sin can also be the sin of a community, uh, we do not understand the fullness of what sin is and how sin can hurt others. So Jesus calls us to love your neighbor. And in some cases our social sin is that we don't love and care for our neighbor, at least the way Jesus did. You know, Jesus, after the Sermon on the Mount, he fed everybody. He didn't feed some and not others. He said, well, he didn't say, well, you guys look like you're eating well anyhow. You don't need any of this bread or any of this fish. No, he didn't do that. He said, everybody can take some. And um, so that's kind of the, the way that we think about how social sin happens. Social sin happens in many ways, and it also happens not so well it's it happens when individuals band together and use their power to hurt someone whether it's a power to be able to buy food whether it's a power to be able to uh, own something whether it is the power to uh, put others down. So I just want you to think a little bit today about what sin is and where you see sin in your life, not as individual sin, but as the sin of the, uh, the people or some people. It's a, a difficult thing to wrestle with and while we as individuals would never do such a thing perhaps we as a society do allow that same action that we would never do ourselves and so today as we close this med meditation I want to invite you into prayer. Wondrous God, God of love, God of life, thank you so much for giving each of us a life to live, 
a place to call home, somewhere where we can be ourselves, be honest with ourselves, and honest about what happens in the world. We pray today for all those who suffer because of others who uh, sin as a collective body. We pray that you show us the way through this world and show us a way that will bring the most love to this world. Amen.